Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 13 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, we're between episodes. Oh yeah, I died. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of mining. Where's my death point? I don't even see it on the map, but I see it on the overlay? It's weird. That's weird. Uh, anyway, yeah, I totally died at one point. Uh, so, uh, yeah, between episodes, just mostly, uh, did some mining, uh, did some other stuff. If we pop down into our basement, which, by the way, I can do with my fancy travel staff now, which I'm excited to try out. Woo. Nice. Yeah, so we've got lots more resources now. Look at that. We've got, well, I didn't get that much redstone. <laughs> we have 429 redstone, but I think I did better in some other regards. I've got some more gold now. I've got some more resources all around, and, and we've already processed them all, so that's looking pretty good uh really feeling pretty good about things so in terms of resources like mining is easy resource you know processing is pretty easy storage is in a good place there's a couple things i want to do today uh first off i want to try a little bit with uh the backpacks mod that i have so sophisticated backpacks we've got two backpack mods right we've got simply backpacks which are simple and basic and straightforward and then we've got sophisticated backpacks which are a little bit fancier. And we found one, remember, when we went exploring. And uh, these get all kinds of cool upgrades and stuff, which are which are super awesome. Uh, if we open up the backpack here, you can just open up with B as well. So there's no real reason to, to take it out of your uh, back slot here, unless you wanted to upgrade it uh, to maybe a diamond backpack and then eventually netherite. Uh, what if I were to grab some diamonds? Look at that. How, how convenient was that? Uh, and then what I want to do is take this guy. I'm going to upgrade you. Nice. Even bigger storage. And look, all more upgrade slots. And then I'll put some diamonds back. Boom. I'm liking this chest. I'm liking this chest. I'm just saying. I'm liking it. Uh, so that just gives me more space. Uh, there's a bunch of things we can do with backpack settings. Um, you know, how, how the backpack interacts. Uh, sorting slot settings. Slot memory settings. Allow selecting slots to remember their contents and only allow matching stacks in them. Open tab to modify slot settings. Cool. Select all slots. Unselect all slots. That's kind of cool. Item display settings. Um, you know. Uh, that's interesting. Neato. So what I want to try to do, actually, today, and what's interesting is I'm noticing that's that's different. Is this a bug? Okay, neat. So when I'm holding the backpack in my hand, maybe that's to prevent me, like, well, no, it's, it's cool. Oh, you know what? It's because I have this open. Okay, yeah. So when I do this, it actually doesn't show any durability bars. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, cool. But there's a bunch of upgrades here. What I'd like to do is I'd like to see if I can make this backpack replace my tier two storage unit uh, that I have for resources, because I think I can configure the backpack to auto resupply my inventory with resources. And that would be cool because A, it would be easier to access the this list of junk. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't call it junk, it's good material, right? But this list of stuff, if I could make the backpack automatically pick these up, void excess, and restock my inventory, that would be kind of neat. Um, and I think I can do that with this because I think I can combine some upgrades. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, pickup or advanced pickup has more filtering options. So I might want the advanced pickup upgrade. Uh, filters, items piped in and out of the backpack. I don't think I need that. Magnet would be cool. Uh, I, I think I want magnet upgrades. Uh, feeding, maybe. Uh, compacting, compacts items in the compressed variants. Uh, advanced compacting, void upgrade, advanced void upgrade. I think I want that. Restock upgrade, advanced restock upgrade. I think I want that. Deposit items from backpacks into a sneak right click inventory. I'm going to keep the tier three storage unit for mining and try to replace the tier two storage unit. So basically, I want this backpack to serve as two purposes one, to hold all my tools, but then two, some of the slots I want to go towards this kind of thing, right? And I think I can accomplish that in the same backpack. And if I can, that would be cool. Uh, what else do we want? Refill. I want that refilling of stocks upgrade. Yeah. Inception upgrade. Makes it possible to put backpacks into the backpack. I love that the name is Inception upgrade. That is hilarious. Uh, becomes indestructible. I mean, that sounds kind of cool, but it's all another story. Uh, smelting, um, smoking, blasting, crafting, stone cutter. Uh, stack upgrades. These I think are cool. That one might be, ooh, blocks of netherite. So that gets expensive real quick. That gets very expensive. Maybe we'll get the gold. Multiplies the number of stacks that can fit in a slot by four. And this is by eight, and this is by 16. So if I did this, it would mean I could hold four stacks of items. That's not as good as the pocket storage because the pocket storage can hold 4095 of each. Four stacks is what, 256? Yeah. 
and eight stacks um, would be double that, so 512. Urgh. Not as good as I was hoping for, but we'll see. Tool swapper is neat. Tank upgrade, battery upgrade, pump upgrade. Oh, that's cool. I should look at something for storing experience, too. Uh, is there, like, some kind of experience thingy um, that can hold experience? I think Thermal has a tome of some kind. Isn't there a tome of Perdicia or something like that? No. Thermal, what do you got? XP tome. Sneak and right-click to store as much EXP as possible. Right-click to retrieve all EXP. Okay, that might be an option. That's from a mod called XP Tome. Okay, cool. But doesn't Thermal have something like that? I feel like it did. It had some kind of tome or book or something that stored experience and then let you get it out. But every time I die, I lose all my experience, and that's a feels bad. I want to I wanna start storing that stuff. But yeah, we're getting off track now. And then there's other stuff I want to do today. So let me look at these upgrades and see about getting them installed to try them out. So this is actually interesting. I didn't notice that, but there's two restock upgrades sort of. So the refill upgrade keeps refilling a stack of the selected items in the player's inventory. So if there's cobblestone in the backpack and I place cobble, it'll restock my player inventory with it. But then the advanced restock upgrade, this guy restocks backpack from sneak right click to inventory has more filtering options. So I think what this does is if I sneak right click on a chest with the backpack, it'll keep filling up the backpack with the items in the chest. And that might be super cool. I might, I wonder if I can do that with drawers, like functional, like, yeah, with like a drawer controller. That would be kind of cool. Just saying it could be cool, right? And then what I could do is I could put all this stuff into, yeah, that, that would be, oh, maybe, we'll see. I'll consider it. All right, if I'm not mistaken, I've gotten all the stuff that I need here. Uh, so I want to do the advanced pickup upgrade. So we're going to need a few bases, I believe. Uh, and I got string, by the way. I made a quick multi-servo press and turned wool into string. I harvested some wool from outside. So uh, let's see. Advanced pickup upgrade. So I'm going to want a basic pickup upgrade. And we're going to try each of the basic versions of this. And then we're going to check out the advanced versions of this to see if I need to, you know, make them advanced. But, ooh, I need a quick chest, which I might be able to knock out real quick. Goodness gracious, Thunderstorm. What are you doing to me? And as you can see from the achievement, I decided to breed my animals while I was outside. Uh, so where were we? Restock upgrade? Yeah, buddy, we can get a quick chest for that. Boom. Restock upgrade. And we'll, like I said, try the advanced versions and the basic versions, and that should all be cool. Oh, another one of these guys. Uh, refill upgrade. Yeah, we definitely want that. And then uh, what else did we want from sophisticated storage backpacks? Uh, I'm thinking... I probably want at least the stack upgrade tier two. So I might want to look into that one. Um, now that's going to be an upgrade base with a bunch of iron and a bunch of gold. That might that might be prohibitively, ex well, it's not that bad. It's probably like a stack-ish, right? Let me put, um, you know what? I could probably just that. Yeah, that seems fine. Look at it go. I like it. That is cool beans right there. That is pretty cool. All right, let me, if I, yeah, there we go, cool. And then you and iron, boom, boom. Nice, that works. I'll take that. So um, what I'll start with is, it's, it's very expensive. It's very expensive, like prohibitively expensive, but yeah, it's only gold. <laughs> I think I just used a significant portion of my gold, but it's okay. So for my backpack now, um, you know, let's put makes backpack pickup items. Now I can open this config option and block match backpack contents or allow. So I'm just going to match backpack contents. That should be cool. Um, and we'll see if that works. So anything that's on the ground that matches the backpack contents should be cool. Okay. Um, so then how about um, stack upgrade? Does that have any? No, it doesn't. Okay, but that's fine. Uh, restocks backpack from sneak. I'll try that in a minute. Uh, void upgrade. Let's make sure that that's filtered correctly. Only works with other upgrades and automation. Works in GUI as well. Only works with other upgrades and automation. Void any. Void allows single slot to be filled with the item and voids anything that overflows. I think that's what we want. Um, and then allow, I think we get to filter what is allowed to be voided. So if I put that in there, it means only cobblestone can be voided. Okay, 
That seems cool. Now I might be able to add a memory slot here. Okay, so now this guy is going to remember where cobblestone goes. So if I stick cobble in there, so far so good. Now I'm going to get more cobble, right? So I'm going to get many more cobble. So if I shift click cobble in there, note that it's incrementing pretty good. All right, now you should be voiding cobble. How about allows single slot to be filled with the item and voids anything that overflows. Only works with other upgrades and automations. I think I want to turn on works in GUI as well, which means when I shift click this, it's going to void it. Haha. -ha. Okay, cool. So works in GUI means when I shift click cobblestone into the backpack, it's going to void it. With this, I think it's only if it automatically picks it up. Now, do we have a the pickup upgrade already configured? Pickup upgrade makes backpack pickup items, right? So watch this. So so with this set to only works with upgrades and automation, when I shift click, it doesn't void. However, if I drop half a stack on the ground, and then let's put this cobble away, I'm hoping it will. Yes, so see how the cobble did not go into my inventory? And it voided it. So that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm liking this. Uh, keeps refilling stacks of selected play items in players' inventory. Cool. So now I can add cobblestone to the list of things to refill. So that when I place cobblestone down, it automatically refills. That's kind of cool. Now my concern is it doesn't look like it's refilling this slot. It voided that cobblestone, didn't it? Mmm. Mmm, not ideal. Not what I was hoping for. That might be a bug because I feel like the, the what I would expect here is that it should fill this slot up. Let's see what happens if we only have 59 of these, right? It looks like it's voiding it no matter what. Interesting. Yeah, maybe not doing what I was hoping it would. So let's try the restock upgrade real quick. Lock. So I think restock, <clears throat> if I shift click this onto an inventory, I'm hoping what it means is it will restock from that inventory, right? So that would mean that if I had a bunch of cobblestone in this chest, would it refill from all of it? That would be cool, right? 33 stacks restocked from inventory. Do what now? That's not what I wanted. Oh, I see. I see. I probably just want to do that and then we make it block. Okay, that seems cool, right? Yeah, no, I figured out what happened there. Okay. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Give me that leather and Constantine. You guys don't belong in there. My leather and Constantin. Restocks backpack from sneak right click to inventory. Maybe I have to sneak right click on it in order to, you know, restock it. I don't think it'll, yeah, maybe not. Restock match backpack contents. Oh yeah, no, that's 100% what I want. Yeah. So if I sneak right click you now, he says he did it. He took my cobble, but he also voided the cobble. I think, I think the void upgrade is not behaving correctly. I think the void upgrade is not filling this stack and uh, yeah, so it's not working as well as I would have hoped. Well, that's a bummer. So let's hold off on this whole thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these guys and uh, let's remove all these configs. There's at least one slot. Oh, I see there is, isn't there? Well, that's a nice catch. That's cool. I'm gonna throw these guys into the into the sophisticated backpack thing. He's not doing what I was hoping he would do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically not with that anymore. I was it was worth a try, but didn't work out as well as I would have hoped. That's fair. We'll play with it a little bit more in the future. For now, it's still a very nice way to keep things in stock. Though I might still want a magnet, but we'll see. Either way, no worries. Let's 
jump into the main content of this episode, which is I want to play today. I want to jump into, we've done some tech, we've done some automation. Let's jump into magic. And the one that I want to look at is Ars Nouveau. That's the first one I want to go with. There's a lot of magic mods in the pack and there's more coming. Uh, so I want to, you know, have a healthy balance of some magic stuff, some tech stuff, some automations. There's going to be a lot of different things that we do throughout the series. Uh, and today I'm in the mood for magic. So I want to check out Ars Nouveau. Uh, I think the first time I tried this mod was back in 116 and it had a bunch of cool content. And I'm really just kind of curious to see like, what all's new? Like, it looks like there's some new stuff in here. I don't know how much is new, but um, you know, there, there was some really cool content back in the day. I'm interested to see how things have progressed. Um, Ars Nouveau allows you to create custom spells with different modifiers and different attributes, and you can get some really powerful combinations and do some really powerful magic-based stuff. But you have to tech up through the mod and get better and better resources. So let's start with the Warren Notebook, which is a simple book and a piece of lapis. So not a big deal there. Uh, I'm going to snag a nice little piece of lapis out of my magic restock chest and combine that into the Warren Notebook from Ars Nouveau, which provides spellcrafting, magical devices, powerful trinkets, and magical entity automation to help development or report issues join the community. Thank you for playing. Um, so what we need to do to get started is learn how to do all the things, right? There's a lot to check out in here. Uh, there's glyphs, which give you uh, the abilities to like do spells. There's some automation, there's some machines. Um, there's a thing called source, which is I think pretty new to me. I don't think a lot of this existed back when I last played. Uh, there's some enchanting. Oh, that sounds neat. Uh, magical equipment that we can get. Oh my, there's a lot more in this mod than I think last time I played. You guys will have to gut check me on that, but I feel like there's a lot more than, than, the, than the last time I played with this, which was like probably a year or two ago, right? Um, so let's start with getting started, right? First, we have to obtain a spell book. A spell book will allow you to create, store, and cast spells using mana. Seems pretty easy to me. So I think the first one we want to get is the novice spell book. Uh, that's going to be your first bit of intro into this thing. So in order to get that, we're just going to need some iron and a book. Easy peasy. Uh, so let's get a shovel. Oh, I put away all my sticks. I usually have a stack of sticks on me, so that's on me. So shovel, pickaxe, iron axe. Oh boy, that's not what I meant to do. I may have overclicked that a little bit. Eh, it's only iron. I'll live. <laughs> and then iron sword. <laughs> Whoops. Rip Dyer's Iron Supplies. But hey, magic spellbook. Hooray! Notice on the bottom left, look, my magic bar. Cool. Oh, nice. And it definitely hides it. All right, cool. Now, I think C to open up the UI. There's a lot of options in here. Look at this. Settings for dynamic lighting, familiar sounds. There's a lot more to this than there was last time I played. I'm a little excited to check all this out, right? Uh, so we will need higher tier spellbooks to get additional spell slots. Um, allowing you to craft more complex spells, right? Which is fine. Um, let me read through this real quick and then I'll be ready to talk you guys through it. All right, so here's how things work. Uh, C to open up the configuration, there's 10 slots for spells, right? So I'm gonna modify the spell in slot one. The first thing we choose is a form, which is how the spell works. It's like if it's a projectile, it'll shoot an object and perform the action wherever the projectile lands. If it's self, it'll apply that to the, the, the caster. And if it's touch, it'll be whatever you click on. So like an entity nearby or a block nearby. So for example, if I wanted a projectile spell, right, I choose projectile first. And now we already have the form, so that's it, right? The second thing is effect break, which will, um, a spell you start with breaks blocks of an average hardness, can be amplified to increase the harvest level. Sensitive will simulate breaking blocks with shears instead of a pickaxe. Well, that's cool. Uh, or harm. Uh, a spell you start with damages a target, may be increased by amplify or applies the poison debuff when using extend time. Note, multiple harms without a delay will not apply due to invincibility on hit. So keep that in mind. So if I want a projectile spell that breaks blocks, I do this. And I will name it projectile break and create. Cool. And now slot one has projectile break. Slot two has nothing. Slot one, projectile break. See that? Uh, you can also, uh, so there's the documentation bit in there, which is cool. Oh my goodness, I didn't mean to do that. But yes, I did it. <laughs> well, there you go. Demonstration of the spell. Um, so you can see here now when I right click this, this spell book, it's going to shoot a projectile and then break whatever blocks I hit. And you see on the bottom left, my mana bar is being used up. And eventually you run out of mana. Fun times. Now there's lots obviously more we can do here. Um, 
So I could do projectile spell, harm spells. Color picker is pretty neat. Oh, that's neat. So if I wanted this projectile break spell to be a different color, let's say I wanted it to be like a cyan-y type color, maybe I have to apply that. Oh, I have to hit the save button. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, that's cool. And the projectile is obviously very quick. Like, very quick. That's neat. Familiars, I don't know nothing about that yet. Sounds, you can, you can adjust the volume. Cool. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. So you can turn off the sound if it's bothering you. Dynamic lights are turned off. Dynamic lights are turned on. This can cause lag for users with the keys. Oh, yeah, look at that. It, it does. Yeah, I don't know if I need dynamic lighting. <laughs> I see what it does. It causes a little light flicker uh, when the spell hits. I don't think that that's necessary for sure. But that's cool. All right, neat. So that's step one, understanding how to make spells. Mana. Pretty easy. Uh, spells use mana. The max amount of mana you have and the speed at which it regenerates may be increased by wearing special armor or by applying the mana boost or mana regen enchantments on your gear. Additionally, you will gain bonus mana and regeneration for each glyph unlocked in your spellbook. Adding glyphs to your spellbook will also increase your maximum amount of mana and mana regeneration. So basically, as we learn more glyphs, and let me tell you that there's a lot of them, uh, there's this many glyphs, many, many, many glyphs, uh, as we unlock more and more of those, we will get more and more mana, which will lead to A, being able to cast more spells, and B, faster mana regeneration, and C, more complex spells that require more mana. All right, so I think the next thing we're going to want to do is get new glyphs. So we're going to want a scribe's table, which is this guy. Uh, all it is is a little bit of wood, though it looks like it might need to be arch wood. Uh... I'm assuming that's not any wood. <clears throat> so let's see. Yeah, it's definitely not just any kind of wood. So I think we have to go find one of the Ars Nouveau trees. I think there's one right up here. Uh, so let's go check that out. Yeah, one of those guys is what we're looking for. That's 100% what we want. So let's mining gadget that guy up. Oh, and good. It easily drops lots of saplings. I wasn't sure if this is going to be one of those like, oh, you can occasionally get one sapling if you're lucky deals, or no, you have plenty. Don't worry about it. You'll never worry. Yeah, and it's it's the you'll have plenty mode. Sweet. All right, that's good. So let's do this. Let's try making one of these bad boys. So for the scribes table, we're going to need some arc wood slabs. And that looks pretty good to me. So I will probably want to build like a magic house, I'm thinking. Like maybe out in this general area over here or extend it back there. But what I'd like to have is like my main base here and then like a mage's quarters and a tech quarters and a reactor. Like I do that a lot. That's generally like my pattern and I like that. Uh, but I'm going to start with get the basics down in my base and then branch out in theory. So I think what I need to do is, oh, hello. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, according to the book, in order to get new glyphs, uh, will require a small amount of setup, resources, and base building. New spells can be learned by obtaining glyphs. Glyphs are created using the scribe table with experience and items. Once you have obtained a glyph, simply use it to memorize the glyph. See the section on the scribe table for more information. Um, so, use the spell book on the table to open the codex. Each glyph requires a set of items and experience points to unlock. Select a glyph by clicking on it in the menu and hit select. Uh, then we either drop items on the table or place them in a nearby chest. Um, you may also write a specific spell to a parchment, which I'm not going to worry too much about. Oh, hello. That's that. Okay. Yeah. So I want to do this. So projectile touch self neat. So this is how you learn new glyphs. Okay. And it uses some experience levels, which is another deal, right? So we already know these three, right? Hold shift for more info, huh? Targets the spell on the block underneath the player. Summons three orbiting projectiles around the caster that will cast a spell on any entities it may hit. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. And then amplify. These are augments, so it like increases the effect. Uh, so like AOE will affect, will affect a larger area around it. So if I did the AOE spell on break, I think it'd do something like breaking a three by three area, right? Um, 
increases the speed of projectile spells. Um, that all sounds pretty cool. Extend time. Applies a silk touch effect to break and causes explosions to not destroy blocks that drop. That's neat. Increases the drop chance from mobs killed by damage and blocks that are destroyed. Okay, I like a lot of these things. And then these are, um, I think these affect uh, spells. Gives players the bounce effect, causing them to bounce upward upon falling. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. Okay, these are all different actual spells, right? So this is break, creates a temporary block that will disappear after a short time, amplifying. Amplify will cause the block to be permanent. Okay, that's cool. Conjure Mage Light. I like the sound of that. We should try one of these. Uh, let's do a Mage Light. I like that idea. There's a lot, obviously, to check out. These are all the glyphs. These are all the Tier 1 glyphs, which I think is what we can cast with this spell, can cast Tier 1 glyphs, right? But if we get if we, wa if we want to cast any Tier 2 glyphs, we're going to need the Mage's Spellbook, which requires some extra stuff. And then Tier 3 Spellbook, which is Archmage, requires, like, Nether Stars and a lot of other things. Oh man, there's a ritual to summon a Wilden, and then we have to defeat it to get an item. That sounds cool. Oh man, we're gonna have to get a Totem of Undying too? Rip. That sounds tough. And I assume this is just changing the color, so don't think that you can just take an existing book. Yeah, you need the Archmage one. Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna be a lot of work. Holy cow. Let's start with Tier 1 Glyphs, though, right? Let's pick one that we like and give it a try. So Conjure Mage Light, Craft. Oh, that's neat. Cut. What's that do? Simulates using shears on entities or blocks. You know, I think there's a bone meal effect too. Isn't there like a grow spell? Evaporate. Oh, that's neat. Deletes fluids in an area. Uh, freeze. Harm. Harvest. Ignite. Sets blocks on fire. Or mobs, for that matter. Uh, interact. Oh, that's cool. Useful for reaching levers, chests, or animals. That's kind of cool. Item pickup. Knockback. Launch. Boost to target in the air. Can be useful for large jumps or scaling mountains. I kind of want to try that. Uh, leap. Launches the target in the direction they are looking. Amplification will increase the distance moved. Also cool. Place block, pull, redstone signal, rune. Oh, that's neat. Okay. Snare, summon steed, summon wolves, toss. And I think tier two might have grow then. Because I know there's like a grow or something like that. Yeah, there it is. Grow. Causes plants to accelerate in growth as if they were bone mealed. Nice. All right. So let's just try one. Let's try, I think mage light sounds cool. Uh, where was that guy? So mage light. Or light, was it? Conjure Mage Light is a lantern and a torch. So if I click that and select it... Oh, cool! Look at that! The items are kind of floating up there. That's awesome. So if I throw a torch on there... So dropping the torch ate the torch. So now let's get uh, a piece of iron so they can nugget it. And then uh, make ourselves a lantern. Oh, cool! Look at that! It's scribing the spell! How cool is that? <gasps> nice! And then I right-click, and I've unlocked Mage Light. Cool! Sweet! So now spell number two can be Projectile Conjure Mage Light. That is neat. And tell me that the color determines what the light looks like in the end. Oh, by the way, you can hold V to change. So let's see. That's projectile break. Okay. So kind of. I don't think I hit the create. So projectile, mage light, projectile light, create. Cool. And then color picker is blue. And that looks cool. Oh, neato. That's nice. I like that. I don't know if I like the color. But I like, I like the projectile. Right? So if we went somewhere that was darkish, that is cool beans. I like, I like long distance lighting. I really do. Like when you're down in a cave and you're mining and you're checking out like a big area, being able to spam torches from a distance is huge. And that is super cool. I like that. I like a lot of that. And I really liked how cool it looked when we when we made the, the glyph and everything. That was awesome. I want to make another one now. Let's find another one to make. So I kind of want to try this launch and leap ability because that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I mean, there's a ton of ones I want to try, obviously. But this one requires an air essence. Magical essence created in an imbuement chamber. So what's that all about? Air essence. Okay. Oh, look at that. All right, so we're going to need a feather, some kind of arrow. It looks like maybe any arrow. Yeah. 
And then a Weldon Wing drops from Weldon Stalkers, I think we've got. And 2000 Source, which we're going to have to look at how that make, how that works out. So I've got a few Weldon Wings. Not many, but a few. We're going to have to, you know, Weldons are a pain. I've found them more than once before and have not enjoyed the experience. But, uh, you know, not the end of the world, for sure. Let's do this. Let's, let me flip through the book a few more. And I want to see what else is up. Because I want to see, like, where else I should be going right now. Um... So, the enchanting apparatus is used for crafting special machines, curios, and equipment. Okay. Alright, so here's the plan, folks, because I've got one. So, I've read through the book, and I've kind of come up with the order of operations for what we should do. Um, ultimately, we're going to want to start getting uh, a bunch of cool stuff via a resource called Source, uh, which can be used to power rituals, summons, and machines. There's a bunch of ways, it looks like, to get Source and relay Source around the world. Uh, however, to get started, I think our earliest access is the Argonomic Source Link, um, which is going to be able to take Source uh, from uh, nearby crop and tree growth. That's probably going to be your earliest access to Source. And a Source Jar will allow you to store it. So it's basically like a, a raw, magical kind of material. Now, you might have noticed uh, that the, um, let's see, uh, Source Dude, the um, Argonomic Source Link requires source gems, which can be obtained by placing lapis or amethyst in an imbuement chamber. So we're going to need an imbuement chamber right here. Um, and we'll notice in the chapter here about obtaining source gems, um, what you want to do is an imbuement chamber and imbues items inside of a source, and we'll convert them to a new item. To obtain a source gem, place an amethyst or lapis inside your imbuement chamber and wait. The imbuement chamber will consume source from nearby source jars to speed up any crafting. A dowsing rod can be used for finding can be used for finding budding amethyst early. So I think I want to make that. I think I assume that I just put this inside an imbuement chamber. It requires 500 source to turn lapis into a source gem uh, or amethyst shards into a source gem. But I'm kind of curious how I get source without it. Uh, so I'm not super sure about that. Um, Yeah, so it looks like the source link requires source gems, right? Uh, so I think we'll figure it out. But that all sounds like a good plan for next episode. So today's episode, we got the basics in, and we kind of figured out how things work with Ars Magica, uh, or Ars Nouveau. And then next episode, we'll come back and take a look at getting deeper into Ars Nouveau, getting some more and cooler and powerful spells. And hopefully, there's a lot of automation capabilities from what I've seen in here. Like, if we look through the book on, like, early automation starting automation there's spell turrets there's bookworm charms there's spell prisms there's starbuncles and wixies uh and then i think there's even more automations available later on which all look pretty cool and i'm kind of excited to check out there's a bunch of neat machines which i haven't even looked through yet warp portals sound neat um enchanting magical equipment rituals familiars like all kinds of cool looking stuff that i really hope uh it's pretty neat, but it looks neat to me. So I'm, look, I'm excited to try it. So I hope you guys are interested in checking out Ars Nouveau. For now, Doll20 signing off. We will come back next episode and get really started on this stuff. For now, take it easy.